Hi there, my name is Corella, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most unpredictable, dangerous traps in Meet Your Maker, the Bomb Ejector Trap. Buckle up, folks, this is going to be a wild ride because there's a lot of numbers, physics, and empirical testing data involved in figuring this trap out. Priced at a hefty 70 capacity, when a raider steps inside its default trigger range of 5 blocks, the bomb trap will drop a load of 8 bombs after an activation time of approximately 1 and a quarter seconds, dispersing them randomly within a small cone. Bombs each last just under 2 seconds and detonate in a small AoE, it's about half a block radius that will instantly kill any raider, trap, or guard in the radius. The bombs are also affected by gravity and have collision, meaning they can bounce off geometry, guards, and the raider themselves. Now the bombs are released in approximately a 40 degree cone, about 20 degrees off the center line of the trap. Uh, we can see that here if I jump up on top of this block and I drop down here. Bombs go flying every which way, that's about 20 degrees off center line. The mods don't affect that in the slightest, so that's about 20 degrees in each direction there. Now when placed horizontally, the bomb ejector trap is lethal out to about five and a half blocks of range. So if I stand here, you can see that I was going to get hit. Uh, and it will be lethal out to about just a little over that center line there. If I'm at about five and a half blocks range, I will be perfectly safe from that horizontal bomb ejector. Now when placed vertically, like in this case, the bomb ejector will scatter its bombs randomly over approximately a two block radius, so about to the edge of this platform. If I trigger this, uh, you can see here, I will be pretty much perfectly safe over here, whereas this block area is going to get hit. Now, interestingly, that is about a square area, not necessarily a circular area as you would initially expect. Uh, this block is definitely under threat despite being further away, strictly speaking, than this block over here. So uh, yeah, uh, watch out in that square area for bombs. Now interestingly, when you decrease the height of the bomb trap, they, that is putting it closer to the floor, that doesn't seem to significantly change the actual potential radius of the bombs. What it does is make it less consistent. So if I test this a few times here, I can uh, just run over here, trigger the bomb trap, and you'll see that those didn't bounce nearly as far, but this one that was over here in the back corner did go off right about here. So you can see it made it all the way to the edge of the block, but most of the bombs did not go as far. So its maximum possible potential doesn't seem to be much different. I'll test that again here. Most of those didn't go as far, but again, one of them made it quite a bit further. If we do one last test here, you can see again, a few of those bombs made it quite a bit further than the rest, but in general, they just aren't spreading over the entire platform quite like they did with the bomb ejector placed higher up there. Another interesting tidbit that we'll want to explore later is that a bomb ejector on the ground seems to have about the same radius of explosions that is as a bomb ejector placed on the ceiling. If I trigger this bomb ejector over here, you can see these bombs go all over the place and they explode in quite the large radius. That's actually almost exactly as much radius as when they were dropped from all the way up there at their maximum range. Uh, if I'm to test this again, it seems fairly consistent too. It's not like the uh, low ceiling bomb traps. Uh, again, these spread out over most of the platform. One last time, we'll uh, just run another quick test. And again, those spread out over the entirety of that platform. Now the bomb ejectors mods look pretty simple at first glance, but they have several pieces of functionality that are not immediately apparent. We'll get into these one by one here. First off, we'll take a look at the eagle eye mod. This adds two blocks of trigger range to the bomb ejector, taking it from a five block range to a seven block range. However, unlike the bolt shot trap, this doesn't increase the velocity of the bombs, nor does it appear to affect the spread of the bombs in any significant way. Even if you take this all the way to its maximum height, which is hard to do on this particular map, but uh, even if you take that all the way to the seven block height and have that bomb trap on the ceiling, it doesn't actually seem to spread the bombs out any further like you might expect. So uh, the bombs still have enough time to reach the floor and explode even at that maximum range, but you're not really gonna increase the effective area of the trap. Now chaos bombs here are where things start to go really off the rails. The mod description for this says that it makes the bombs bounce further, and strictly speaking, that's true. However, that's because the bomb ejector releases the bombs with significantly higher velocity as well as the bombs just bouncing more. 
Now, my theory is that the Chaos Bombs actually have lower mass, and that the bomb ejectors release the bombs with a predefined fixed amount of force rather than a set speed or velocity, uh, which would mean that the uh, amount of force applied by the bomb ejector just goes further if you apply the same force to a less mass ob or lower mass object, uh, it gives a greater total velocity to that object, uh, which causes, in this case, the bombs to travel further. That's just a personal theory, I don't really have any proof of that, but it does explain several phenomena that we will explore later. Now, what this means in practice is that chaos bombs can spread significantly further when you use them in floor traps. Uh, you'll remember from our previous tests that this uh, chaos bomb trap on the floor spread bombs just about to the edge of the platform very consistently. However, if we have chaos bombs on a floor trap, they go flying off the edge in all directions. And if we test this repeatedly, we'll see that this is actually fairly consistent. The bombs go higher, and they go further. In fact, they can reach me all the way on my little safe testing platform. They were never able to do that in my testing without this mod, so the bombs actually travel quite a bit further. Now that can leave a safe zone around the bomb trap itself for a cautious raider, so if those go flying all over the place, I'm actually perfectly safe just standing on top of the bomb trap. But if I don't know that, those bombs flying all over the place look scary as all get out. So yeah, this can be definitely used to your advantage as a builder. So we saw how effective that was on a floor bomb trap. Well, let's take a look at it on a ceiling bomb trap. Surely uh, with the chaos bombs, these are going to spread that same huge radius. They're going to go all over the place, right? Well, not so much. That is just a teeny tiny little bit further. Those bombs barely made it off the edge of the platform and they didn't make it back to the ground level. Which is a little odd. The chaos bombs on the ground based trap actually went considerably further, really. So if I trigger that again, again, one of those bombs made it away from the platform, but the rest of them exploded solidly on the platform. One final test here. And we'll again see that these chaos bombs explode solidly in that radius. So while the chaos bombs are bouncing higher, they are only bouncing once, and they're actually not spreading out as much as they were with the floor-based trap. Now one final quirk here is that when placed on the floor, Chaos the Bomb Ejectors can throw bombs well over a block in height, and they will do it with 100% reliability. So uh, you'll see here we've got actually an un- or this, this is a Chaos modded uh, Bomb Ejector. So uh, when we trigger that, those bombs go all over the place, and it's actually extremely difficult to avoid them on this platform. However, if I test this again, and this time I've, uh, as you can see, removed the Chaos Bomb mod, the uh, little mod slots there are empty. Uh, I will just trigger this again, and you'll see the, a couple of bombs make it out, but they don't really go much of anywhere. So if you want to put a bomb trap in a recessed area in the floor, you definitely want the Chaos Bombs mod on it. It will cause those bombs to go everywhere and be considerably more lethal. Now the heavyweight bombs are physically larger. They barely roll or bounce at all due to what seems like a massive increase in the friction of the bombs. And as a result, they travel far less once they're in contact with the ground. A horizontal bomb ejector only has about three blocks of lethal range as compared to about the five blocks of a normal unmodded bomb ejector. Now, dropped from a maximum height though, they actually spread out just about as much as unmodded bombs. If I apply this to this bomb trap up in the ceiling and go in to test this, we'll see again uh, once this triggers. Those spread out all over the platform again. That's about normal. That's not necessarily what you would expect if they just increased the bomb's mass, uh, as the horizontal velocity of the bombs would remain unchanged. So that's a little odd. Uh, again, if we test this, uh, we will see that the bombs spread maybe a little bit less because they don't roll as much, but they spread pretty much all over the platform again. Now, despite the fact that the bombs are physically larger and the particle effects from the explosion appear to be larger, the bombs still seem to have exactly the same size of explosion radius, that is, that normal half-block radius of explosion size. Uh, they're still lethal out to that same range. Now, the second wave mod is, of course, the same as all of the other surface traps. The trap will not be destroyable or visible until the raider picks up the gen mat, at which point the trap will appear and become destructible, and it'll undergo that usual four-second arming cycle before it can target the raider and fire. 
Okay, so there's one other case worth talking about here. Chaos bombs and heavyweight bombs are not mutually exclusive in all cases. Now, despite the description on these two basically saying exactly the opposite thing, right? One says the bombs bounce further, one says the bombs bounce less. You'd expect that to counteract each other, but it doesn't. Uh, the chaos bombs seem to reduce the mass and increase the bounce height, while the heavyweight bombs do decrease the bounce height, but they also increase the rolling friction, and the increased ejection speed of the chaos bombs seems to still be there. So you still get those bombs uh, coming out faster and moving farther, while the heavyweight bombs still seem to prevent that bouncing and rolling effect that you get with the chaos bombs. So they will still fly out faster, but they're not going to bounce and roll all over the place nearly as much. All right, so as you can see here, I've got this bomb ejector modded with both of these mods, and we're just going to go ahead and trigger that. And these bombs fly all over the place, as you'd come to expect with chaos bombs. They bounce once, maybe twice, even because of the heavyweight bombs seeming to uh, give the bombs a little bit more gravity. But if I run this same test on the floor and trigger the bomb trap there, those bombs go all over the place. Again, we get that larger radius than we expected from the chaos bombs. So the chaos bombs are actually still affecting the width of the flight there. It's just that when the bombs actually hit the ground, you can see this in a couple of cases, uh, when they actually make impact, they don't bounce or roll quite as much. So it seems like these are not mutually exclusive mods, and it can be valuable in some specific cases to add both of them. However, it is worth noting, and I've got this on the testing platform up here, that uh, the bomb ejector does not seem to chuck the bombs nearly as far. Again, I've got this modded with the same mods there. And uh, you'll see here, it got four of those bombs out, which is about equivalent with what we expected from the unmodded bomb trap. Uh, though the bombs did seem to go a little further, perhaps, uh, this is still not what you want to do with these four bomb traps. And as one final test here, I've got these on a horizontal dispersion rig here. And that bomb trap is going to explode. We saw the last one came out to right about there. And if we trigger this uh, other bomb trap that's unmodded, uh, we saw that they only actually got onto that um, block in front of us there, in this bedrock block. So... There's something a little weird going on with it, and I haven't entirely figured out what, but those two mods don't seem to be exactly mutually exclusive, even though they do say opposite things. Alright, so we've looked at a lot of numbers, and we've done a lot of testing. What does this all mean, and how do you actually use these things? Well, the most obvious use case for a bomb ejector is to drop bombs from the ceiling, because they're bombs, they're supposed to come from above, right? Well... According to the testing that we just did, they're almost exactly as effective on the floor. And in the case of Chaos Bombs, they actually may be more effective if launched from the floor. If you always use bomb ejectors on a ceiling or a slope ceiling, readers will very quickly discern the pattern and they'll be on the lookout for those. And that makes these expensive bomb traps basically useless. But if you mix things up by placing a Chaos Bomb ejector in the floor or hidden by hollow cubes or geometry, uh, maybe with something to encourage the raider to jump over that square, you can catch raiders completely off guard. Uh, where those explosions are supposed to come from above, so when they hear the bomb trap go off, they're naturally going to look up. And as we've seen, the bomb trap is just as effective, if not more effective, from the ground. Now, when using bomb traps, low ceilings are usually your friend. Even though the bomb ejector gets more consistent bomb spread when you place it on a high ceiling, the raider can simply grapple to that high ceiling to get away from the bomb ejector and then just go on their merry way. However, you can also use this to your advantage by placing traps and guards at or near the ceiling, or just threatening the ceiling, which will threaten to either kill the raider if they stay up there, or they have to risk explody death if they fall back to the floor. Bombs also have collision and they roll around geometry. This makes them very effective in areas with a lot of smooth surfaces, or especially when rolling down a slope towards the raider. The raider often has to make a choice in those cases. They have to try and flee the fast-moving bombs, or they have to try and grapple past them. And in a narrow hallway, that has a pretty high risk of kicking a bomb up the slope along with the raider, which is usually fatal. In general, when you're trying to make use of bomb ejectors, you want to do one of two things. You either want very diverse, broken-up geometry to kind of force the bombs to spread out and move around, 
or you want that extremely smooth geometry with a lot of slopes and hills and gentle curves to guide the bombs down the route you want them to follow. So let's look at a practical example of this. I've got this little uh, kind of circular room here, and uh, let's say our raider is coming in here, and he's not going to notice this uh, painfully obvious bomb trap for some unknowable reason. So he's going to trigger this, and those bombs are going to bounce around. They're going to fill this entire room because of this block. Now, you might have noticed that they didn't really follow this whole curve here. They didn't follow through the whole arc. That is largely because the regular bombs don't actually bounce all that much. Now, if I play a Chaos Bombs to this, however, uh, we can do the same test, and you'll notice that those bombs make their way all the way around back over to this block. And if the Raider was trying to run through there, the chance of them running into one of those bombs and carrying it along with them as they tried to rush past would be pretty high. So, yeah, uh, you can use bomb traps, especially with Chaos Bombs, to try and channel bombs through geometry in specific ways. Now, another thing we need to talk about is guards, specifically warmongers. Warmongers are melee guards that love to charge straight at the raider. And more importantly, bombs have full collision, including for guards. This combination is extremely tricky to set up, but a warmonger with the mod that boosts their movement speed charging the raider while a bomb ejector dumps bombs has a very significant chance of kicking those bombs towards the raider, which greatly enhances the effectiveness of the bomb ejector. It's almost like having homing bombs. If you try this, though, don't use heavyweight bombs because the bombs won't roll or bounce towards the raider nearly as effectively. So to demonstrate this, I've set up this little testing rig here, and we're just going to kind of blunder on in here like a completely blind and deaf raider. Oh no, there's things! Let's run away! Oh! Uh, we just had a bomb kicked towards us by a warmonger. Uh, needless to say, that's pretty effective because those bombs go a lot further than you would expect. Also, please consider that bomb ejectors will happily nuke an entire room full of your traps and guards and hopes and dreams. As we saw there, that warmonger definitely died to that bomb ejector. So a clever raider will know this, and they'll exploit it to clear your traps. They'll trigger bomb ejectors that they know have a high chance of causing friendly fire, just to get that nice bonus experience for, well, causing friendly fire. And they'll also use it to clear out nasty traps and rooms full of things that they just don't want to deal with. So whenever you're placing bomb ejectors, always place them such that they can't cause too much friendly fire. As such, they're often best placed at the end of a trap series where they won't cause friendly fire to the other traps because by the time the raider gets there, the other traps will have already been avoided or disarmed. Now lastly, please consider using the Eagle Eye mod for bomb ejectors. For maps with a lot of decorative architecture, you can often completely surprise raiders by bombing them from well outside the range at which they'd expect a bomb ejector to be placed, or from what looks like a purely decorative piece of geometry. This is especially effective on long slopes or when you're placing bomb ejectors on sloped ceiling blocks, because the bomb spread tends to be very unpredictable. Occasionally, you can even put the bomb ejector so high up that under the default field of view, the raider won't see it. Uh, easily, so they'll uh, have to look around for that bomb ejector to see it. Uh, one of the primary cases of this was on one of my first normal maps. I stuck a bomb ejector with the Eagle Eye mod on a very high piece of what looked like decorative architecture, and that was one of the deadliest traps in the map, simply because no one looked up that far. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Next time we'll take a look at one of the most lethal, consistent traps in the game, the Incinerator Trap. Hope you've had a great day, and I'll see you then.